Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here thanks for joining me. I'm Katie and today I'm going to use 20 different types of watercolour paper to see how each one behaves using the same techniques. So if you've ever been curious about these things then you need to watch this video. The materials I've used are labelled on screen and I will be revealing which paper corresponds to which fish towards the end of the video, so enjoy! I've wanted to use a variety of paints and grades of watercolours to see how they behave on each sheet as well. And to begin with I'm using the Sennelier Neutral Tint and I'm using that as a wet on wet just so it highlights low light, the actual fish shape. It's actually really interesting from the get-go just to see how differently the paint and the water behaves on each of the different types of watercolour paper. Once I've let that dry I'm going in there with a colour wash using Daniel Smith paint so I'm using the nice artist quality. This is all written in the background as well which I'm sure you've noticed but I wanted to use a high grade paint on here again just to see how it behaves on each of the types of paper I'm using. Now I have a variety like I say and ranging in budgets as well. I recently touched on some bargain art supplies from UK shop The Works as well as B&M and they are included in here and it will be revealed at the end of the video which is which and just a few thoughts on each one. Now to a certain extent this isn't going to be some sort of tier list where I'm putting things into categories of which is the best watercolour paper. That's not really what this is about. There are a few which aren't great, there are a few that perform really well and there are a few that are in the middle but this variety of techniques I'm using is to emphasise mainly which paper would be suitable for which watercolour technique. Well, that are the ones I'm using on here anyway. There are papers here with 180 GSM thickness, ranging up to 1000 GSM. So there really is quite a lot of variety. And also there are a few with different finishes. So I have some rough textures, some cold press and some hot press ones. Again, it's just to mix it up and just to see which techniques work the best on here. I've been meaning to do this personally for a while now anyway, I think I, I end up with quite a lot of different pieces of paper here and there, some of which have come from art boxes, some I've just picked up along the way, some I've had for years and it's actually really nice and useful to catalogue what papers have worked best for which techniques. I think this is something that maybe you guys can take away from this as well if you're in a bit of a quandary about what watercolour paper to use for a project. It's just good to have it at hand. They're really small cards as well. I've cut them to the size of the Stonehenge sample books which I've featured in a previous video and again though they're a really handy size. I can just put my hands on them have a flick through and go right okay I'm going to use this paper for this project and away I go. It, it's not too dissimilar really from swatching your watercolour paints or any other materials. I mean if you're going to do that with your mediums then maybe it's not a bad idea to do it with your surfaces as well if you can. Let me know in the comments if you do something similar just to catalogue your materials. I mean this is about as organised as I get but again it's really helpful. Now I'm at the stage of this little setup where I'm adding more vibrant colours and again I wanted to see the contrast between the slightly more muted granulated backgrounds with the slightly more opaque and the Van Gogh watercolour tubes which I've received in Upcrate and from Scrollbox many years ago just seemed ideal to do that. It's really interesting watching this video back actually, seeing how the paint behaves while it's wet. It's, it, again, it's good having this reference to go through for future projects, but I actually find it quite interesting looking back and watching how the paint morphs and moves across the 
the actual paper. Again, I used a wet on wet technique here after removing the masking fluid. And that was also a good way to test which papers behaved how I wanted them to with masking fluid. Because sometimes they, they just don't. I tend to find the rougher papers tend not to like masking fluid all that much. This just is my experience. Whereas the smoother hot press papers tend to release it a little bit easier. And I also find as well that a thinner coat of masking fluid works better than a thicker one. So there's another little handy hint for you guys. Now I chose to do fish for this because again, you've got all of those gorgeous vibrant colors and it also was a good shape, I suppose, the right word to say they're a good shape to use where I can remain consistent on each square of watercolour paper well oblong and as well it allowed me to have that nice contrast with the background if I was to do another video exploring different watercolour papers would you want me to do fish again or would you want me to find something else to do I'd love to know in the comments below so make sure you drop a suggestion down and if I do another video like this again I will take that into consideration at this stage I wanted to see how metallic and sparkly watercolours would work on here so I used the Van Gogh metallic and interference watercolour paint set. Cool, that's a mouthful to say, isn't it? I only used it in a linear way rather than making it behave like I did with all the other watercolours. I allowed it to bloom a little bit in some areas but I did use this quite thickly because I really really wanted it to stand out. It was also really insightful to see how vibrant some of the watercolour, the regular watercolour, I'd put down because it allowed that contrast to develop, I guess, between the sparkly particles of the interference paint with the, um, well, the not so sparkly stuff. And it, it really highlights which papers performed in a way that allowed the watercolours to be vibrant. Am I making sense here? Now, I must admit, using these metallic watercolours has really given me a bug to do some more painting using these. I don't know what it is, but just adding that little flash of sparkle to it, it just really adds something to a painting. And I know it's not really something that can be easily replicated with a print, for example, but as an original, I don't know, it's, it's just nice. It just gets the eye to catch and follow the image along with the flow of things. And of course using metallic was a really nice way to sort of add the shimmeriness of these fish because they do shimmer and it just seemed like, again, it just seemed like another good subject to use for this little experiment I'm doing here. Do any of you guys use metallic watercolours or have you thought about it before? Let me know in the comments below and I'm also thinking about doing a video on metallic watercolours. I just need to think of the right thing to do and the, a nice fair way of doing a comparison. But let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me do with those and how would be a good way to demonstrate the different metallic watercolours I've got. So just as a roundup, we have done a neutral tint layer. We have done a background layer using granulating high quality paints. For the fish, I have used more student quality but still pretty good watercolours and we've used metallics. There was just one last thing to try on here and that of course is gouache and I thought again I tend to use gouache on watercolour paper and I thought it would be a nice way to see how it behaves on all of the different types here. I wasn't expecting any dramatic changes and if I be honest they all came out pretty good as far as the gouache is concerned. It's, it's really, it's got to be really awful paper to reject gouache. I also thought it would be a nice way to just define these guys a little bit more and add a little bit more form and flow to them and I really like actually as a piece how they all came out. So now is the time for the great revelation. The first one we've got here was done on scroller box paper which was the 300 GSM and featured in a box not long ago. You could say this was a good all-rounder and performed okay. 
Paul Rubens 300 GSM cotton watercolour paper it was for this one. I like how the paint behaved on this and how the colours flowed in to one another quite easily. The metallics and the gouache also look good on here too. I really like the granulation and the texture on the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press 300 GSM and again another good all rounder, a nice thick paper to work on. Also 100% cotton, nice. Following on we have the Hot Press Stonehenge Aqua at 300 GSM and again very nice even though it was smooth the granulation still happened and the reflective particles from the metallic paints were spot on with this. This was a nice paper. St Cuthbert's Mill Botanical 300 GSM Hot Press 50% Cotton, mouthful there, is a personal favourite of mine to work on and performed really nicely. Perhaps not quite as vibrant for the muted colours, which is a total oxymoron, but still a very nice surface, smooth, lovely to paint on and really nice for your vibrant colours. The Langton by De La Roni 300 GSM Hot Pressed was a nice performer again, similar texture to the Botanicals, however allowed the deeper darker colours in the background to look a little bit more bolder we'll say, and again lovely granulation with those paints too. And the metallics really showed up very nicely on there. This fish is from a brand I'm not a huge fan of and that is WH Smith's and it is Bockingford 300 GSM. Although the, I must admit the paper did perform quite nicely, I'm just not a huge fan of WH Smith's art materials in general, I think they're quite expensive for what they are, but this paper performed nicely. We have Crawford and Black by The Works, 230 GSM, that's all the information I've got. And as you can see, not all vibrant. The gouache and the metallic show up okay, but it's not going to make the most of any colours you use on there. And it was a really horrible bleached white paper as well. So, um, well, it's okay for gouache, I guess. We have the Honeymool. 425 GSM cold press here and this is what I use for Himi horoscopes. Mm, doesn't like masking tape very much but it's a really nice thick watercolour paper to work on and I like how vibrant the colours came through. It's not the most vibrant but I really like this paper, it doesn't crinkle. Cotman watercolour paper by Windsor & Newton and this is cold press, not, and it's at 300 GSM. It wasn't massively vibrant but the yellow hues did show up quite nicely but the muted colours not so. The metallics and gouache showed up nicely though. The third Stonehenge paper to make it on this list is the Aqua Cold Press 638 GSM. The colours came out lovely and vibrant and the metallics were really nice on here too. However it did tear a little bit with the washi tape so that's just something to consider. Bockingford by St Cuthbert's Mill at 300 GSM really was nice to work with. The texture of the paper really matched the watercolour technique on the background and the paint travelled really well on here. The metallics and the gouache also worked beautifully on here and this was a nice paper to work on. Archie's Hot Press 300 GSM watercolour paper is this fishy's paper and although the granulation didn't happen a massive amount on here the paint travelled really nicely and the blooms and the general experience was really nice and I wouldn't expect anything differently from Archie's. 300 GSM cold press by Boldmere aka The Works is this particular one and it, it worked okay. I do wish though that the wet on wet techniques allowed the colours to travel a little bit more. However, it's not a bad one to work with for the budget range, can't grumble. Here we have Archie's Watercolour Fine Grain Cold Press 300 GSM Cotton. And again, a little on the pale side, but the colours did travel really nicely on this one. The metallics didn't show up amazingly, but again, that could just be down to texture more than anything else. Apart from that, again, it's Archie's, it's fabulous, it's wonderful. The Brunel Franklin from B&M, which 
I have no other information on. Actually surprised me on this one. We have granulation on the background. The colours are nice and vibrant. They could have travelled a little bit more, but everything worked out okay. And for a budget paper, this isn't bad at all. Nice and smooth too. 1000 GSM this paper is and it's by Cardi, 100% oh, cotton rag, a very thick textured paper, doesn't like washi tape much but really nice for letting your colours travel across the page. Again with it being so textured the metallics don't show up amazingly but nice paper. A purchase from Aliexpress, Duart watercolour paper, 25% cotton, 300 GSM, performs really nicely, I've used this on a lot of videos in the past, really nice, I think it could have granulated a little bit better but as far as vibrancy is concerned it worked out really well and it's quite a good budget paper and it comes in a really cute little tin as well. Crimson and Blake 180 GSM. This could be from the works or from B&M. It's quite an old pad of paper I've had in for a long time. As you can see, not massively vibrant. Even the metallics don't show up great on this. I've had it a while though, maybe because it's really old. That's probably why it didn't perform great. And it's only 180 GSM. At 640 GSM, this is the second Cardi paper featured on this list. It's 100% cotton rag and it has the fine surface. Again, very similar to the thousand one. Didn't really like removal of washi tape though, but lovely to paint on. I really do hope you found this useful. And again, it, it's just my thoughts on it. You're all entitled to your own opinions on this and your own discoveries. And that's the whole beauty of this. But this is just my spin and things I take into consideration when I'm working on a piece and picking the right materials for it. And of course, sometimes when curiosity gets the better of me. I just want to say a massive thank you for watching though and I do hope you have found it useful, I really genuinely do and I really enjoy sharing these things with you guys as well so if you could please give me a like and if you're new here as well please subscribe and it just helps me grow and it just gives me an idea that I'm doing something right as well. Of course, as well, I'd love to hear what you guys have got to say in the comments and I will see you on the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.